Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. I am ready for the event. European Space Agency, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. European Space Agency, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Isa Piel from ASI headquarters in Rome. How do you hear me? And hello, Isa Piel. Hello, everybody at ASI headquarters. Welcome aboard. I have you loud and clear. And hello, Isa Piel. Hello, everybody at ASI headquarters. Welcome aboard. I have you loud and clear. Samantha, ti lascio ora la parola a Delfina Bertolotto. To Cristina Bertolotto. Thank you. Ciao, Samantha. Hi, Samantha. I'm Cristina Bertolotto. I'm in the uh, auditorium of the Italian Space Agency, and we're celebrating, as you know, the event of closing the uh, national event 2014-2015 Italy Mission X. We have 260 students and 40, stu and 40 teachers coming from Rome schools, Monte Congreti, Matera, Ercolano di Bis and Bisceglie. We have a big participation of participants, students, who have been training according to the program for two months and would like to ask you some questions. But first of all, there is something definitely important that uh, we have to talk about. Tell me if you heard this thing. Uh, all all I, I got is a, a lot of warmth, affection, and enthusiasm, but I don't believe I understood the words. Happy birthday, Sam. I, I figured. Thank you. Thank you very much. Best wishes. Okay, so there's only one question I want to ask you. I will take just a little bit of time because uh, I, I want the students to take more time. We have heard you last week uh, talk about our uh, Minister of Research and you were giving counsel on how students from, from school age should follow beyond training as astronauts, to what they should do to realize their dreams, as you did, Samantha. Can you, can you tell them also? Of course, Delfina. So first of all, hello, everyone, and congratulations for uh, uh, completing Mission X. What uh, I like to say when I talk about what, or when I encounter young people like you is that uh, even since your age, you have to find opportunities to grow and become strong. So as you've been training uh, and your muscles with uh, Mission X, it's important to find opportunities to train character and, and force of character. So a little bit to complicate your life and, and find challenges that maybe you're not sure that you have the strength to face because only by facing these challenges is how you find that uh, faith in yourself. But but uh, talking about Mission X, I, I want to tell you something more. W even when you have a lot of character and determination, sometimes it's not enough. So it helps if, if some things that are important to you and for your health and, and it, it's, it, it's important when, when things like that have become habits that you don't even have to think about. So I hope that with Mission X, you have started a path to acquire habits that are healthy for nutrition and, and health so that, that growing up, these are things that are in your pocket. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to make any efforts. They're habits. And now you can concentrate on your grit and determination. Uh, you can use those things on, on more important things that can allow you to achieve your dreams. Thank you, Samantha. And now I will give the word to the first girl who is going to ask you a question. Hi, I'm Viola. 
I come from Belly School, and this is the uh, question we have made. Considering that you're in space now since over four months, and Earth you will only see from a window, what do you miss the most from the blue planet? And do you uh, are you able to stay on track with what's going on on Earth? Hi, Viola. We are hyper-connected up here, I have to say. We have internet access, even though it's a little limited. But they send us uh, news and, and newscasts if we want to watch them. Usually the ones from the day before, so we're, we're always a little bit late. And of course we, have to, uh, we can talk to our loved ones, families, um, via telephone or email. So, so let's say that we, we don't miss contact with what's going on on Earth. Of course, you don't have the physical presence, the smells, the, the, the taste, the, and the, the immediate presence of your loved ones and your family. So these are the things that you miss a little bit. But uh, I have to say, I love life up here, so I, I tend to not dwell uh, so much on, uh, on these things. I'm Giulia. I come from Giovanni Verga School of Rome, and here's the question. So we have studied that you astronauts, to stay healthy, you have to train regularly. How much physical exercise do you do per day, and what instruments do you use to train? Hi, Giulia. So, our activity program has two and a half hours dedicated to sport, to physical activity, and they're divided in two kinds. One is resistive exercise, so that's what on Earth you do with weights. So here we're weightless, so of course uh, working with weights would not work. So we have a machine called A-RED, which allows you to do the same types of exercises that you would do in the gym, just without weights. And this is to maintain muscular tone, but also to give uh, stimulus to our bones so that our body does not decide to uh, lose uh, bone mass w while we're here with without weight. And then we have a platform, a, uh, a treadmill, a, a, a somewhat of a, a, a bike, so without, without a seat. A, even the treadmill, we have a harness with some belts that, will, uh, that keep us attached to the uh, treadmill so that we're able to run even without weight. Hi, I'm Giuseppe. I'm from uh, Sant'Arcisio School, and this is the question we've made. I, I've read that each astronaut can bring with them up to 1.5 kilo of uh, personal effects. What did you bring with you? Ciao, Giuseppe. Hi, Giuseppe. So, I brought, for the most part, in this 1.5 kilo that you're talking about, it, it is what we can bring with us with the Soyuz. So, it's what flies with us and, and comes back with us. So, I, I put the most precious, uh, beloved things with me. For the, for the most part, it, it's small objects that friends and, and family have given to me that, that are objects of, of significance for them, so that, that I brought here to, to add even a little more uh, significance that I will then return to them. And then I brought with me some few hundreds of, of, of little books that you can uh, keep in the palm of your hand, which, which I've used to uh, collect uh, some poems and little excerpts that are of significance for me and that, that somewhat give some meaning in the, in the words of writers and poets. Uh, they, they give somewhat of a meaning of... of uh, uh, living in space, and those two will be gifts uh, for when I come back. Hi, Samantha. I'm Emanuele from Matera, the European Capital of Culture for 2019 from Giovanni Pascoli Institute. In what moment did you feel that your passion for space started? It, was there a teacher that motivated you in this direction? Hi, Emanuele, and congratulations to Matera. So I've always dreamed since I, I was little to go to space, even before I understood how you go into space and, and what, what's an astronaut was in reality. So I used to watch uh, sci-fi movies and, and I was dreaming 
of, of uh, exploring space and flying on a spaceship. But then growing up, I, I became more enamored with uh, science and technologies and flight. So I became an engineer and then a military pilot. So all these things that put me on this path. So so the, the world of astronauts is a world of technology, science and flight. And, and it's also very international, intercultural uh, environment. So my other passion is languages. So it, it's a type of life that's very much made for me. And I'm very happy in it because uh, all my passions converge in it. Hi, Samantha. I'm Matteo from the uh, Comprehensive Institute Visconti of Rome. And this is a question that I wanted to ask you. So throughout your uh, path to become an astronaut, uh, did you find any obstacles? And, and when, they, when they seemed like they were unsurmountable, did you think about uh, giving up? And, and if not, how did you find solutions to your problems? Hi, Matteo. It, it's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever had any obstacles that seemed unsurmountable, but also perhaps because mentally I've never accepted that an obstacle would be unsurmountable. There might be difficulties. It can require, you know, facing an obstacle can, can require sacrifice and, and effort. But, but let's say that in my head, nothing was ever unsurmountable. So, and almost always, it's it's like that. I, I really believe, especially when you're very young like you, that, that you can face life and difficulties with, with faith in yourself, w that, that a solution with effort and a little bit of, of effort uh, you can find. So don't ever think about giving up because uh, this way you'll never achieve uh, important objectives. Hi. Hi, Samantha. I'm Julia. I come from Monte Compatri. I would like to ask you a question. What will you eat the day after you come back from space? Hi, Julia. Well, so it, it's hard to predict what I will want, but I believe, I believe that I will eat a big salad, one of those big salads that you eat in the summer, full of uh, of, of fresh vegetables, uh, hopefully some seeds and nuts, a little bit of mozzarella and tomatoes. So, th so this is a little bit what I imagine that I will eat the day after I return. Hi, I'm Francesca from the Comprehensive Institute, uh, Institute uh, Minazzi of Matera. So here's a question. Here on Earth, we take everything for granted. We're used to, we're used to having everything and everyone that we need right here. When you're far away from everything and everyone, do you feel that you're able to appreciate more the value of every single thing? Hi, Francesca. Well, so a little bit you understand that a lot of things and a lot of uh, commodities that you have on Earth that uh, you believe are essentially important that you can't live without, then in the end they're not so important after all. You, you adapt to living very easily in, in, and living in a more Spartan way with, with less amenities. So it's just a question of adapting and, and of, of being a little more flexible. And, and, and you live uh, really with serenity, with, without a lot of things. So I say when you're here, it's like camping. Um, you have to adapt, but it's kind of a luxury camping because uh, you have, you have a, a, a lot of things at your disposal, you know, we don't have running water, but we have a toilet. Uh, we have a great variety of foods and, and, and beverages. We have a little bit of room to sleep. So at the end, it's not such an uncomfortable life. You just have to adapt a little. Hi, Hi, I would like to ask you if on board of the International Space Station uh, you, took, you got the flu like we did at school and how you cured yourself. So the virus, uh, can the virus uh, 
spread in situations of microgravity. Hi, Enrico. The, uh, the question is interesting. So the, the answer is no, we did not get the flu because the vi flu virus is not here on board. We're, we're very careful every time that a new vehicle arrives. Uh, we're, we're careful that uh, people don't bring uh, something like the flu or, or even another uh, uh, microbiological cargo. So we test the air, surfaces, and water. We continuously test to make sure that there's no contamination. But your question is interesting in another way. It's true that we've made experiments with with uh, pathogens, also viruses, and, and we've verified that uh, in weightlessness they're they're much more virulent and aggressive. And, and this is uh, it goes hand in hand with uh, an Im immune depression. Um, so. The, our, our immune system of animals and human beings, it's compromised up here. So it's its surely thinking about uh, future missions and exploration. It's something that we need to study and go into in depth because we have stronger pathogens and, and a weaker immune system, which is not a very happy combination. Hi, Samantha. I'm Jada from uh, the Comprehensive Institute Al Samorante. I wanted to ask you if throughout all these months on board the space station you missed your family. Ciao, Jada. Hi, Jada. I, as I've talked about earlier, there are lots of possibilities to stay in contact. So perhaps what I didn't say earlier uh, is that once a week uh, they organize a video conference where we can see our family and our family can see us. And for one hour we can talk this way. So the, the, the opportunities to contact uh, we have and there are many. And, and in many ways you get used to, to allow these uh, moments of communication to become very special and intense. Of course, you you're missing the contact and physical presence and the, the, uh, the possibility to, to hug and be close. So this, of course, a little bit um, we miss. Hi, Samantha. I'm Davide from the uh, Comprehensive Institute of Ultera di Riccia. And I would, I would like to ask you about what you do during your uh, rest periods. Hi, Davide. So we don't have a lot of free time, especially during the week. I have to say the the days are very full, and, and you get to evening and and you eat and perhaps you uh, call the family, you write a couple of emails, and, and at least I'm tired, so I I sleep like a stone afterwards. Uh, but uh, you have a little more. Uh, free time in the weekends, um, uh, unless they're the weekends like we've had recently. But I like to take photographs, so we have this uh, very uh, beautiful view from Earth, from the cupola, and I, I've, I've tried uh, throughout the mission to take photos of, of places that uh, struck me so that I can uh, share it with uh, uh, people on Earth that have been following the mission. But uh, of course, otherwise, uh, we spend time together. Uh, usually on weekends, we, we organize dinners where we, uh, all six of us, dine together. This past weekend, of course, we celebrated my uh, my birthday. And I have to say, almost the entire um, crew has had a uh, birthday during the mission. So, so celebrating weekends is sort of a tradition that uh, has been happening often. Hi, Samantha. This is Flavio from the Comprehensive Institute of Rome. Uh, I would like to know how you recycle the uh, useful substances and how you get rid of waste. Hi, Flavio. It's a very interesting question. We have a uh, life support system here, which is a closed loop system, meaning that we recycle all the waste uh, products of, of human life, uh, of course, of, 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 except for solid waste. So urine is recycled and, and transformed into uh, potable water. But even sweat and, and humidity that, that uh, is, is injected into the cabin, 
uh, is is recondensed into the air conditioning system, and then it's sent to uh, a system that uh, recycles it and transforms it into potable water. So, so the water recycling system is closed loop, except for some uh, leaks that are um, happening, which uh, that's why we replenish. But even breathing, the carbon dioxide that we breathe is removed uh, from the cabin. Otherwise, this is very important. Otherwise, uh, this would be uh, uh, tox toxic because we don't have plants up here. We have uh, hardware that removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and even then, it's a completely closed system. So, so we have a sabatier cycle that closes the cycle, and then I forget I forgot to tell you the oxygen is is produced by electrolysis with water. Hi, Samantha. This is uh, the end of the, this link. Uh, we thank you so much for being with us today. All the uh, Mission X uh, boys and girls wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Delfina. Thank you to all the boys and girls of Mission X and a greeting from Paxi. Bye.